What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of BS for Build. In this episode, we've got our fresh paint, we gotta clean up a lot of stuff, and we gotta add the rest of our bits. This is basically the final installation episode. So all those nice little body parts, carbon fiber hood, carbon fiber spoiler, all that good stuff is going on in this episode, and we're gonna try and make it down to a car meet. We got 20 hours until the car meet, let's see if we can do it. Stay tuned. Check this hood out. Now, we have a little bit of panel gap. I'll work on fine tuning that, but for now, just bask in the glory of all this expensive ass carbon fiber. This thing weighs um, one and a half pounds. No, it, it, I don't know what it weighs, but it's awesome. And then check this out. It lines up perfectly, so when you look through and you can see the valve cover cover, it's just the Toyota symbol. Woo, baby. I'm excited about that one. The next thing I was gonna do is install these hood dampers right here, but after a little bit of reading about them and just playing around with them, they are really, really, really high compression. Like I can't even push that down with one hand. Um, and uh, it says on the, in the instructions not to install those on a fiberglass or carbon fiber hood. And to be fair, I bought those before I went and bought the carbon fiber hood. So uh, they're not gonna work for this application. What it is is if you have too much stress, it takes too much pressure to push those down, you could crack your hood when you're trying to push it down and force those things to compress on themselves. So we'll either go the skateboard method or I will find the stock BRZ uh, hood stand thing. I, I could probably go dig that up somewhere. It's hopefully around here somewhere. So uh, next thing we're gonna do though is get under the hood and start working with some electrical stuff. I got some changes that I'm gonna go ahead and make that are that, that could that are gonna be good for the car no matter what, but could potentially uh, help solve our running rich problem with the engine. So I'll do all that stuff right now, I'll tell you guys about it later. All right, well, besides electrocuting myself, that all went pretty well. Um, here's what's up. Uh, what I was doing there was basically kind of improving the electrical system a little bit and, and changing some things around. So obviously the car's been running really rich um, and that's all controlled by the math and especially when the car flips over to using fuel maps when we're in the high boost range, um, a lot of that has to do with the math. So what we wanted to do is obviously this being an electrical unit, the math could be bad, but it also could be other things that are my fault. Like for instance, not enough grounds. So what I did was I jumped underneath the car and, and added three more grounding points to the chassis. Then up top on the battery, I added another chassis grounding point to the battery. We had one, but we added another one. So that should help um, if there was, there can be what's called like just uh, electrical noise. So this wire going from here all the way back to the ECU, if it doesn't have enough good grounding points, that signal can get scrambled, it can get mixed up, or it could just um, be going crazy and then the ECU could notice it's going crazy and then go into a fail safe mode where it would run really rich. A lot of running rich scenarios like that could just be that the ECU is in a, in a safety mode, just trying to keep the car safe. So that is all improved. Oh, the other big thing that we did as well though is I hooked up, so the Aristo ECU has its own wires that run through the loom to go to the alternator. And for some reason I decided to put the BRZ ECU on the alternator, which I don't really know why I decided to do that. I guess, you know, the light under the dash would work um, if I did that, but anyways, it should go to the Aristo one. So that's the other thing that I did is I plugged the Aristo loom into the Aristo's engine alternator. That way um, it knows exactly how much voltage it's getting and all that other stuff. It knew before, but now it will know through its own channels and everything like that. I think that might make it a lot more happy as well. So uh, the next, some of the next things that I'm gonna go ahead and tackle under this engine bay are the air filter and now, this may get dirty, guys. I don't know how this is gonna work. So in the long run, we're going single turbo. Oh, I got a single turbo. I forgot to include it in last uh, last episode. Here it is. So it's a little bit too hot today to be uh, back in the shop right yet. I'm gonna get there tonight. So I ran down to PRE, these guys, to pick their brain a little bit about the technical difficulties that we're having, and boy, am I happy that I stopped by here. So 
I was reading your guys' comments. Sorry, I know this is a painting episode. We're going into engine mode for just a second, and then we'll get back. Um, I ran. I read all your guys' comments for troubleshooting, working with things, and uh, and and then I took that, kind of came out here, relayed that, and I have a million different really good ways to troubleshoot this now. I got a like a lot of really good um, concepts of what could be wrong, and I'm super stoked. I, it, anyways, I'm really happy. But also, V is for build turned two years old yesterday so I bought the 2J a little present that is a Garrett Turbo still on a budget still on a budget it's a used Garrett Turbo but I'm so happy about it so it might not be today it might not be this week that we switch to single turbo it might not be till after we go to California but eventually we're gonna go single turbo and we're gonna get that power baby I'm so excited all right let's get back to the shop all right, so I got a single turbo. I was really excited about that. Uh, obviously the troubleshooting things that we're doing are some of these troubleshooting things right now. And then um, when we go single turbo, the air filter, will, we're gonna have a lot more room because there's gonna be no more of this nonsense when we remove these twins. Uh, so I'm gonna make, I'm gonna try and find room for an air filter. It's supposed to fit right there, but I've never been able to make it fit. I'm gonna try again, and if it doesn't work, then uh, I'm gonna build some sort of slimmer air filter that'll be a temporary jobby. Uh, something that's just better than running with nothing. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and tackle that right now. Well, I forgot to turn the camera on, but everything went really well. I, uh, I had before, I had a two and a half inch uh, in the air filter and I had a real tough time fitting on there, but the three inch is the right size. So it was probably a little bit of a shipping mistake with CX Racing. They sent me out a completely custom kit, so they might have plucked the wrong one off the shelf. So three inch, Works perfectly, fits in there nicely. I'm super stoked that that went easily and I didn't have to like build my own. I also did a um, uh, overflow tank reservoir uh, down there and yeah, it's a, it's a Diet Coke bottle. But um, the idea is that there might be some fluid coming out of there at certain times and then wants to go back in. So you wanna have some back pressure fluid. That's the way the 350Z was and it started working really well after that. Although I will say, I haven't had any cooling issues after I fixed that leaky line back there. I haven't had any cooling issues, but you know, better safe than sorry. We're gonna be driving to California, very hot weather. Um, so that's all done. The next thing that I wanna do is, these wheels are a little bit too far out in the front and the camber is uh, more on one side than the other. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is pop the two wheels off, uh, install some thinner wheel spacers on there that is gonna sink that wheel in a little bit more and then I'm gonna adjust the camber to be equal on both wheels. Quick change of plans. I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade the brakes while we're in here. I mean, now I gotta take this wheel back off, but uh, these are Hawk Performance Pads. They're really good. They sound like hell. They sound like your car has no brake pads left, but they stop really, really well. I did some research and found out that the bias, the brake, brake bias, for those of you that don't know, when you add a, a heavier engine in the front, you want more braking power in the front to kind of even it out so you brake evenly. If you add in these pads only in the front, you get an evened out brake bias, which is good. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade these though, help up, help out our stopping power, which will lead to overall better performance and a little bit more safety. So yeah, pop the wheel back off, swap out the brake pads, throw everything back on, and then do the other side. All right, wheels, tires, wheel spacers, everything, up, brakes upgraded, everything went okay. Well, it didn't all go okay, actually. You probably saw me with a grinder down there. Uh, one of the bolts was cross-threaded onto the original uh, BRZ lug, and those lugs are just, they are, terrible they cross thread so easily so the bolt was cross threaded on there i daddied up on it cranked it off and i ended up snapping the lug in half but luckily i didn't need that much of the lug i didn't need all the thread depth so uh, i cut off the part that was cross threaded so it was just cleaned uh, and cleaned up the threads and then threaded a bolt back on no cross threading so everything's on there properly that's all good just one lug underneath is a little bit shorter than the rest which won't really cause any problems when it's that close to the hub. So we're all good there. Um, uh, what's next? All right, next up, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the fog light inserts in the front grill on this bumper, get everything kind of tightened down and stuff. I wanna find a better way to attach those fog light inserts, and I will do that. And then uh, we'll go ahead and throw that on the car and finally like do the final mounting of the front bumper on the car. All 
right, front bumper and everything is reassembled and back on the car. Uh, everything went pretty well except for this side's got a little bit of a panel gap because the um, the clips that like clips that piece of the fender or the bumper into the fender are pretty unhappy and I don't have the piece of plastic trim that goes around the headlight that also clips the rest of the bumper out of there. So eh, it's going to be a little wonky temporarily. I'll order that piece in and we'll fix that up as we go. But uh, that's honestly probably how it was before as well. So that's all good. Uh, next up, the roof is supposed to be completely glossy. Um, so like satin and then gloss. So I'm gonna go ahead and buff the roof or wax buff polish. We're gonna, we're gonna take off a little bit of that top coat and polish it down. is done looks great uh, Chelsea's right now working on uh, cleaning up the side skirts so the side skirts will match the roof and then the the lip color up here with those two it's all gonna be that gloss in the meantime I'm gonna roll us around to the back and I'm gonna install our new tail lights you guys are really gonna like these these new tail lights let me install them and I'll show them to you guys lights are installed I can't remember the name of these but they look nice the the red kind of matches the red of the wheels too so that's cool let's go turn them on and see if they work yeah brakes oops brakes yep uh left right that's it they work all right next up we're going to install those window louvers throw that on the back there and install my license plate and get ready for the spoiler There we are, DIY window louvers, looking pretty fresh. They look, they look good. They, they, they're bouncing the light the right way. Uh, last thing that we're gonna do, carbon fiber spoiler, coming right up. carbon fiber spoiler is installed it's a lot less uh, dramatic than the last one and going a little bit more low profile maybe maybe I, I really like the ducktail like the little bit more intense look so I might I might get something more intense a little bit later but that's it it's all done it's time to get out of the shop I'll give you guys just a quick walk around way too close to the car unfortunately um, yeah as far as version one of the final installation goes I think this is pretty pretty good so uh, it's time to head out to the meet. Just made it to the meet. This place is absolute chaos. Let's go take a look around. hanging out talking with people here so I'm just gonna do a little montage Chelsea's gonna walk around with some cameras we'll hang out and then I'll come back later Awesome! Thanks to everybody that came out. Uh, the car looks great. The car's running great. I got I got to show Chelsea what it's like to drive in a boosted car for the first time. Very fast. It's scary to her, 
Um, so that's where I'm gonna end this episode. In the next episode, we're heading down to California to uh, go beat TJ Hunt in a little bit of a little race. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to catch us in more places, find us on Instagram. And sorry, we're walking into a restaurant right now. <clears throat> find us on Instagram, BS for Build. Twitter, BS for Build. Facebook, BS for Build. What's the other thing? Buy my merch at bsforbuild.com. Scroll down to the shop. All of that supports not me going to fancy restaurants. I swear to God, it just supports <laughs> just the builds. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. See you tomorrow. Peace. Come, come.